Yo, what's going on, Michael Dreyer? What, what's going what on, buddy? What up, what up, what up? How you been? Long time. It's a long time, dude. How long has it been? Oh, dude, days. I mean, feels like forever. Days, dude. What's it like in New York City right now? We don't go this long without seeing each other, man. No, it's not healthy. I feel like I'm missing a limb. Yeah, I feel like I'm missing a testicle. Yeah, yeah. Speaking probably, of which, it's probably because you've lost yours speak. this year. <laughs> but dude, speaking of which, I don't know if I should say this. I'm not going to say this. You got testicular cancer. No. <laughs> speaking no, of know, which, look, every look, uh, we, we went wanted... to we went to uh, look every once in a while. I'm not I'm not crazy with this, but every once in a while, you know, I'll smoke a little a little ganja. Is Once this in a while, what you don't know if you should talk about talking yeah. about you smoking yeah, yeah. weed yeah. in twenty twenty two. I know it's crazy. Once oh. in a while, not a pothead, Cameron. I'm, I'm on meth as we speak, <laughs> <laughs> and so you know I do that occasionally. Um, and my wife is now sending me these like Instagram posts about how bad THC is for your sperm count. I get these messages now. So like, you know, like this weekend I went to a thing. I smoked a little something, right? They were there. It was a nice little holiday party and you know, like two hit thing. Right. I get a message today. Oh God. THC is bad for the sperm. <laughs> you just see here. You're just like at a party, like and you zoom over and smell like. Yeah. And you're like. Think about the children. Everywhere you go, you light one up. She like head pops out. Uh, Anyways, know, so many potheads have had kids. Probably I know, more they potheads than well. non-smokers. They don't turn out well. They don't. No. 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 This is it. Like, look, there's a generation. Let me, dude. There's a generation of children that came from the hippie generation. This is Gen Z. Gen. Gen they're all messed up. Gen Xers. They didn't Gen come from the hippie generation. Our parents were the hippie generation. Our, our, well, we're messed up. The millennials the are the kids. Mo- the millennials, that's it. The millennials. The mil- millennials are messed up. Not as Gen much Z as is even Gen worse. Z. Gen Z is even worse because the millennials, they the already the had the millennials one generation. The and then they yeah. continued it. You know, now this is two I generations think... of THC inf- infused sperm. I, that's the root problem. Look, I think, honestly, every generation just degrades more and more. Until a comet will come and blow us up. This yeah. is what I think is. I think this is just how it's done usually. I think like if you watch that ancient civilization documentary and they're like, yeah. oh, back in the old ice age, there was like a pre-existing intelligent civilization that lived here and they disappeared. I think it was because like too much porn and TikTok. I think that's what happened. Yeah. I think TikTok eventually it does. Every. Well, this is a known fact that every great civilization eventually creates its own TikTok. You know, the Romans had their version of of TikTok, um, Mm -hmm. as did the Sumerians. Um, You know, it's it's bound to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just bound to happen. I mean, this is this is this is kind of the the cycle. It's the cycle. You you know you you (sighs) hunter gather the wheel. You know, fire, TikTok, TikTok, yeah, and then yeah. collapse. Yeah, that's what it works. Civilization collapse. So, look, let's talk about movies real let's quick. Let's talk about movies. Too let's much talk time about with you. Movies. Let's talk about all the movies that you've watched since you've seen me. Let's talk about White White Lotus. Oh, Have White you Lotus. Seen this this fucking shit, dude. Everyone's talking about White Lotus. My wife is so into this show. She refused to go on Instagram before watching the season finale so that nothing was spoiled for her. That's how much she's into White Lotus. I mean, took it very seriously. Yeah, I mean, I heard people talk about season one. Not a lot. I watched a couple episodes. I love Steve Zahn. Love Steve Zahn. Steve Zahn should have been more than what he was. I mean, I'm happy that He's not on this episode season though, right? No, but he's not on the season. Hopefully the season one did something for his career again. Cause I think that guy You love Steve Zahn. 
You always talk about him. You always talk about Steve Zahn has never failed in a role he's been in. Anything he's in, comedy. I mean, I haven't really seen too many dramas of his, if there are many. I saw one horror thing, you know, for drama, whatever. He he held his own. He, you know, he didn't he didn't embarrass himself like he did good. But anytime he's mostly in a comedy role, like he steals the show, in my opinion. Like comedic relief, whatever it is. Dude, right. he was he was great. He's one of those guys, like he really to me was part of that kind of I don't know what they were. I think it was 90s, maybe early 2000s crew, mm-hmm. which was they were like the supporting actors of all the cool movies back then. And and in that group was like, you know, William H. Macy, John Turturro, Steve Zahn. Um, there's a bunch, you know, John C. Riley. Um, and and so many character that, actors you're saying yeah they were the supporting actors in all the cool movies back then there was a crew like there was that yeah. era like now those guys are kind of like you know lakeith steinfeld and you know I, i'm not even gonna try to name all the young dudes and and and, and chicks that are like kind of the cool supporters now but back Ooh. then oh. you know when Soderbergh ran as king and when the Cohen brothers were really pumping out films and like like that moment in film Steve Zahn was a huge part of it and Paul Thomas Anderson and all these guys like am I crazy like I think there was an there was a there was a crew that were very common in all these films and Steve Zahn was a part of that crew as an actor and a lot of those guys you're still seeing you know, like there's still, but Steve's on. Something happened. I don't know. He just kind of disappeared. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess I, I would. I wouldn't put Steve Zahn in the same category as um. Oh fuck! Who you just? Who you just? William H Macy. I mean, they never. You know, they're completely different cast. I mean, Steve Zahn ma- mainly just did like ridiculous comedies. You know, what like, movies was Steve Zahn really known for? I don't know what he's known for. I know what I know him. In. What do you like, remember him from? Oh, uh, man. What was the first thing I remember Steve Zahn from? You uh, even, never even fucking seen a Steve Zahn movie. <laughs> Steve Zahn's black, right? Yeah. He's a black he's guy? The, he's the black actor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved him in uh, The Terminator. He was, <laughs> he was good in The Terminator. <laughs> You don't well, know any Steve, Steve Zahn movies. I don't do know you? any Steve Zahn. <laughs> Steve Zahn, uh, did you ever see uh, um, Saving Silverman? No, I never saw Saving Silverman. Oh my god, he was so good. At Which movie is that? Was that the one with William with um with uh, John C. Riley and Ben Stiller? No, no. Which no, one was Saving Silverman? That was a uh, fuck. That was something Long else. That had, like, something. Similar. Uh, no, it was with uh, um, Jason Big. It was with uh, Jack Black. Him and Jack Black are like the duo in that movie. Okay. And they, uh, I forget her name. It's, it's such a funny movie. Um, I don't know. No, I'm bad at the moment remembering other movies, but he's always just. Out of sight. Out of sight. He was the best in that. That, that was great. Like he and out of sight was just awesome. But to me, that was like, I don't know. Anyways, I like Steve Zahn. Back to White Lotus. So. I like, look, I liked season one, but I, I just finished watching season two. And this is one of those shows, which it's very rare. Season two is better than season one, hands down. It is, eh? Yeah. They really did it. They, it, it is a better show. So you I mean, saw I, season one. I saw season one and I watched season two. I'll be honest, like, I liked season one. So there were people that loved season one. I, I was not like, Matt, like, I really liked it. So I I even hate to do this kind of comparison thing because I genuinely enjoyed it, but it was getting accolades. There were some people that were like this, this show, like what? And to me, it was good, but it, you know, I don't know. It kind of felt like it was creating suspense for the sake of suspense and actually wasn't any real suspense. It didn't pay off. Yeah. It didn't ever pay off. And then they had to do something crazy at the end, which it did, but like they would do these, these like, montage music moments that made you believe something else was happening. But like, to me, that wasn't actually woven into it all with any great, I don't know. Payoff. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. I hate those shows that for, honestly, like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm usually a contrarian. Like I, I didn't finish white Lotus. I, I watched two, maybe three episodes of season one. Didn't, it didn't hold my attention. Um, 
I just wasn't interested in what was happening. Um, and uh, that was it. I mean, that was just what it was. I mean, I'm sure if I finished it, if I was forced to, I'd find that it was out. It was good. I was I was into it. I don't mean to detract. All I'm trying to say is is I feel like they nailed it in season two. Like building suspense, trying to pull a theme together and make it cohesive. Like re- like this, everything just really wove together so well in season two. Way better. Well, that's good. That's important. Season that's one. I'm trying to say, like, I was just trying to say that, you know, for instance, like I'm, I'm, I'm a, con- I don't know why I say this, uh, but I'm not a contrarian, but I just have different, I feel there's a lot of shows that people have liked that I'm like, why there was no payoff like for me personally not to get off topic but season one of true detective everyone raved about this oh, fucking no. season. you're out of your mind no i'm not that was fantastic i'm not because here's the thing it right as you know story is only as good as its ending and the there ending was a gripe with the ending was awful no, it's not awful. If, if that ending was like a fucking climax you're like blowing your load all over the place. Sure. That would have been a great because they built that fucking thing up to me. I was like, these two guys, the mystery, the mystery, the mystery, this person, this thing, they're they're building, they're building, they're building. And it was like it was like a cheap ending of a guy that really wasn't that creepy looking. He wasn't that scary. What he was doing wasn't something I haven't already been desensitized from seeing since Silence of the Lambs. Like, they didn't bring a new thing to us that made me go, wow, you know? And for for that reason, I thought it was bad. True Detective Detective is a great show. Everything that happened along the way with that show, everything that they did, I mean, the way they built their suspense, the way they built up the kills – these detectives, the way you got invested with these characters, how flawed they were, all of the suspense and the way that it was woven together throughout the story. And then also what they were doing cinematically, like, you know, you get to episode five and then it's like a long take that lasts for 20 minutes, which was mind blowing. Like, I mean, it, they were just firing, in my opinion, on all cylinders. The so, yeah. entire show, yes, the ending, did, it wasn't like... I remember I, I kind of I remember watching the ending and just being like, okay, like, you know, it gets it even gets a little metaphysical when he's like looking in space and, you know, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but it didn't detract from me. Um, I love that show. I thought that show freaking nailed it. I've heard the criticism for the end. I can kind of see it, but don't care whatsoever. But you know what show I will agree with? does genuinely falls apart which also was like kind of like true detective was just really running like for a minute there you're like oh this is gonna be a great show then in my opinion lost itself was the one with john Turturro, where he's the detective guy you remember that one and then uh what's his name the guy's blown up since then is riz riz ahmed or something yeah Uh, remember that show what was that show yeah same same perfect you nailed it same exact that one does that in a big way like to the point where that you know look a detective story is a very hard thing to do because you know you have to when you're a detective you're trying to solve something you gotta have like it's got to be a puzzle that when the pieces finally come together you can see the whole picture and go that was masterfully done if that doesn't happen it doesn't work it's it's hard and then if that really doesn't happen, then you're just like, oh, well, you're creating puzzle pieces that don't fit anywhere and never did. And I can tell, you know what I mean? Like, I and I thought that should do that. Look, you, detective you didn't do. just wasn't maybe the perfect ending potentially, but like, it was all there, man. I mean, that was me, a fantastic show. Look, I loved watching that show because of John Tutor. That that was probably in my opinion next to you fucking you fucking no one fucks with the Jesus you know next to his role in um Big Lebowski probably his best fucking performance that guy was so dimensional there was so much going on he was so loose with it I mean I I was like this guy better win a, a fucking all the awards for this I don't know if he did I don't think he did but I just think 
what it was. And it's the same with True Detective, not the payoff. I don't know much about White Lotus. I don't watch it. But when these shows, you say it's detective shows, maybe maybe that's true. You know, I I'm, I don't I don't know things. Well, as both much. those shows are detective stories. Those are. I don't know about White Lotus. It's, it's not. It's not. Sure, but right. talk about a good payoff. The the ending of season two, White Lotus, great payoff. Great. Really well, say, great payoff. I don't know, but you you spe- you specifically said detective shows are hard to do. Um, well, it's the greatest I, genre. The, the detective I, genre is probably the best genre in film i just think yes i just think it i don't know if it matters or not the genre i just say whatever the genre is when you're gonna slow burn something you better fucking be lighting fireworks off at the end like when you build True detective wasn't a slow burn true detective was edge of your seat every step of the way firing all 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 cylinders white by slow burn i mean you're waiting all fucking season. Look, the pieces for have what? to fit. The for this, a detective this, story, the pieces have to fit. For what this mysterious fucking thing is going to be. And then when that payoff comes, it's not just detectives, it's anything. It's a horror film, it's anything. You better be ready to make that payoff payoff. Because if it doesn't, you know, then why did I just watch the whole season? And well, I, just- I will say this. I will say this. Within the detective genre, and this can lead us to our next topic. Within the detective genre, it's not uncommon, even if you go back to like great noir movies, it's not uncommon for the plot to make absolutely no fucking sense. Here's an example. The Big Sleep. Okay. Bogart movie. Fantastic noir right. detective story. If you really pay attention to the plotting of that story, it makes no sense. Like there's no way to make sense of it. It's genuinely a magic trick. It's like sleight of hand. Look here while we're doing whatever we got to do here and forget about that. Just really to create the aesthetic mood, character, all that stuff that you know you, you expect from a detective story, mm-hmm. the mystery, but like there are certain pieces and this is not this has happened. There there are a number of films that this happens within. Um Big Sleep is a, a famous one only because the director admitted to it like in a statement. He's like, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. You know, like this, that, and this, the plotting of it. You're kind of like, huh. Um, but still a great detective movie and kind of works. Because it's more uh, about the character. I don't know what it is. You know, I don't know what it is. But anyways, that can lead us over to um, Jean-Luc Godard, who has passed away. Uh, but I guess it just came out recently that he wasn't a fan of Pulp Fiction. I guess... This is news, but he made a statement that he didn't like Pulp Fiction. What did he say? When He didn't think it was authentic. He didn't think Pulp Fiction was authentic. Authentic in what? What would, what would he mean by authentic? I don't know. You know, look, Tarantino ripped a lot of stuff from Pulp Fiction. In uh... fact, there is a famous scene, which people don't talk about this enough, but there's a scene um, that is in Pulp Fiction. It's the scene when... Bruce Willis comes back to the hotel with mm-hmm. his his girlfriend. Yeah. I forget the character's name. And she's like, I want a pot belly. You know, like it's nice to the touch. You know that scene? Right. Yeah. You know, and they're yeah. in bed and Apple like pie. Yeah. yeah, blueberry pie. Yeah, blueberry so pancakes. That right. Movie. That whole scene pot belly. like in the bed with her and they're talking and blah blah blah. Um, and the 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 lighting's a little red. Are you on your cell phone? Hmm? What? And the lighting's a little red. The light's coming through, and that scene is from Contempt, which is a Jean-Luc Godard movie. It's 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 visually kind of like exactly from Contempt, and even dialogue. I think they even talk about the pot belly. Like, it's from Contempt, and that's weird. I mean, I mean, it's a rip. We know we know that Tarantino, and he admits it. Like, he just. Takes things from other movies, yeah, like foreign films, right? Yeah, it's no, old no, samurai no movies, and no secret. So that first off, I guess if that's what he's talking about, authentic, okay. But at the same time, art steals from art, right? It's the biggest form of flattery. You know, when you try to fight against stealing, it's kind of a, it's kind of futile because how many times do we have come up with ideas that we think are original and we realize that we probably saw that shit. 20 fucking years ago one time and we especially think, now we think it's our idea every idea has been done i have and the thing is i have authentically who knows maybe i didn't 
come up with ideas that I'm like, oh, that's happened already. Okay, so how authentic was it? If someone else has done it, I mean, maybe I did. Who knows where ideas come from? But it, it, when you're blatantly taking word for word from a scene, <laughs> it's a little different. I get that, but everyone steals from everyone. You can't not. You oh, know? listen, I I have no issue there. Tarantino is one of my favorite. You know, I love his films. So there's no issue there in the way that he look good artists borrow, great artists steal. The way he steals is brilliant. And if you want to be like innovative or talk about being fresh and original, the way he mixes things, that that's the best way to be fresh in the world yeah. today. In a world, I mean, that's contemporary art. If you look at contemporary art across the board, I mean he yeah. came out of the era of rap music. That was them sampling classics from the 70s and yeah. putting a new hip hop thing. I mean, like yeah, yeah. he was doing the same thing in film. You look at yeah. art, you know, people like Alex Monopoly or or Banksy. I mean, they're taking old images, even what Warhol started, they're taking old images and right. repurposing it all. That's contemporary art for sure. That's pop art for sure. Um, it's definitely pop art. Uh, and Tarantino's right in there. So, you know, I, but look, I don't even know if that's what Godard meant when he said it wasn't authentic. So what do you think he meant? I think that's what he meant, but I'm saying I, I can't say for sure. Um so but, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how Tarantino might feel about this. You know, he named his company a band apart after Godard's first movie. The production well, company, Tarantino's say, production like, company. Tarantino was a hack. He just didn't think he liked Pulp Fiction, right? So I think there's – let me dig. It's a, it's a, look, this is a great topic you brought up, but let me dig a little deeper to, to real, the real juicy element of this all. Please. Do you think that he said this on his deathbed? Yeah. That he was just like, I love you. <laughs> well, fiction was inauthentic. <laughs> <laughs> he was on his deathbed, and his whole family's there, and he's going, he's going, and and Tina, I've always cherished your smile, and Jean Pierre, you. We'll have my piano. And Malcolm, tell Quentin Tarantino <laughs> that Pulp Fiction was inauthentic. Uh, Malcolm's yeah, like, uh, uh, grab if that's the case, whoo, whoo. if you said it like offhanded, like in an Not interview, a deal. that's one thing. But why On is it the coming out now that he died? It yeah. makes me think this. He said this on his deathbed that yeah. he was literally just like, "Get Quentin on the phone, yeah. <laughs> you fucking hack." <laughs> With his last, breath. I am dying. Damn it! If that, Get Tarantino on the fucking phone. <laughs> if that is how it went down. I'm sure Tarantino's, Tarantino's, Tarantino's like, "Hello, heart. yeah, yeah, hey, John, yeah, love your movies, big fan." What? Oh, that's good, dude. That's that good. would. That would. That would, without a doubt, shatter Quentin Tarantino for sure. That his one of his idols had took, to say it took some of the last oxygen he had remaining. In his I mean, world. dude, honestly, I would it, have to tell him so much more respect for Jean Luc Godard if that's the way that it went down. If he carried that with him to his fucking deathbed, and he was like, if he saw Pulp Fiction for the first time like this in the theater, and was just like, that movie's inauthentic. Yeah, yeah. Waited thirty years. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's <laughs> like, "Oh, it's the greatest movie ever." And he's just like, and they're like, "So, and he's in this interview, nineteen ninety four." Like, so, uh, John, like, what did you think of Pulp Fiction? Yeah, you know, Quentin's a big fan. He named it after you. He's like, "Not yet. The time's not right." Yeah, yeah. The time's not right. <laughs> I shall. Yeah. Next question. Yet. You know. Next question. Yeah. I, if that's how it went down, then that guy might be the greatest would, cinematic mind ever. That would fucking Big that respect. would that would that would hurt. That would hurt a lot. Carried that one to the grave. Um. So, uh, oh, dude, this is wow. This is a story, in my opinion. I mean, James Cameron cannot go to the Avatar two movie premiere because he got COVID. That movie has been on hold for two years because of COVID, okay? They, I mean, like, you know, they cannot afford to not release that movie in theaters. It is, you know, that is a movie that is, you have to have the box office for a movie like that. That movie ain't going to Netflix. 
You know what I mean? Like it doesn't work. No one can afford it. You know, it, there's so much writing on that film. He has spent the last 15 years of his life working on part two, right? It's had to delay long, right? it, had to delay it because of COVID, you know, because you got to go into theaters, then had to wait even longer for people to kind of get back to the box office and even get it. Now people only want to go to movies. Like there's a whole new trend now because of COVID. Everyone's like, oh, I can just watch from home. Like, you know, Batman comes on streaming right away. Like, yeah. you know, and here he is. He's like, all right, we got to, we got to launch it. It's time. It's time. It's been 15 goddamn years of my life. I've delayed it for COVID. Just we're, fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> like, like, it's going. And right wow. before the premiere, he gets COVID and he can't go. I, I just. Honestly. If that's the case, what's delaying it five more fucking days? <laughs> wait, wait another week. You're going to get over it. Like, wait five days. Or it, it, if you can't for some reason, like everyone, the caterers tied in. I, I don't I don't know. Yeah, yeah like, the catering in one of those like glass pot mobiles. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Ride his ass into into the premiere like he probably should. It just like a god descending yeah. on everyone. Yeah. Going on the so mobile. I wonder if he cares. How about if he does or not? You know, I mean, what are, what are premieres to him? The premieres are probably hassles to him. He probably hates the whole thing. No you know? way. You know, you know, some people absolutely not. He's not like you, Mike. I don't know, but people. That's such a people. Mike that you just framed that from your own deluded mind. You're the you're you, Woody Allen and Larry David, are the only people. Who would come up to their premiere of their avatar too yeah. yeah. after a massive first one would be like, oh, I don't even know if I want to go to this thing. It's, it's, I don't care. I got I got the sniffles. I'm just gonna stay home. I can't do this. The fact that this is how yeah. you have you bump me next to Larry David and Woody Allen blows Absolutely. my mind. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know, but you know, these, these guys, these people, they've been to so many, they get bored of them. It's a hassle. The press. No, dude. no, no. I think he wants to it's be there and like bothering them. It doesn't work like that. This is his, this you, is one of his, this is his fucking legacy. What are you out of your mind? Can we you talk think, about you're out of your mind. You think that he doesn't care, but the premiere of avatar two. What I mean, what do you think? He just like, I think what's more what important. Do like we make a YouTube doing video? Well. He's like, I can't be there. Then whatever. I'll do another one. <laughs> I'll do another one once 15 years. Get out of your mind. Yo, right, let's I move mean, on. Let's move on. No, I want to say something. 15 years. It's been like 12 years since the first one. I don't even know if anyone cares anymore about Avatar. Like Bro, it's been so long. Why? Why did it why? take that long? What, what? Well, here's the thing. Okay, so I'll say this. Um, you know, there was a lot of talk for a while about him creating 3d technology that you don't need yeah. to wear glasses for. I remember that when I was in college, they were talking about <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 3d. You don't need to wear glasses. You just go yeah. and it's like 3d. I remember I met this one dude who was a Disney Imagineer. I don't know if this guy was full of shit or not, but I met him at some gathering one time and he was like, I saw it. He's like, I saw the tech. I walked past and I was able to look in the theater and saw this 3d tech off the screen. He's like, it's good. It's 3d. I don't know if that's whatever. Maybe he was not lying to me. Maybe he's Is that me. how it's going to be? No, it's not. They failed. So I, don't, I don't know what happened to that, but okay. I'm pretty sure unless like we're all about to be bedazzled and we don't know what's coming we're about to have our minds blown and they just decided to not even promote it. We're all going to sit down in the theater yeah. next week and just be like, yeah. like have a 3d experience without glasses. That's like, you know, God, um, sure. Everyone fact, has a seizure. Yeah. 72 yeah. people are dead. Yeah. We thought COVID was going to be it, but no, it yeah. turned out Avatar no. 2, 2 is what destroyed the population yeah. with yeah. its 3D tech that we weren't. It was just like, you know, <laughs> <is> fucking bleeding <laughs> yeah. watching the movie. Everyone like just goes to see the movie in mass one, like over the course of one week. <laughs> he wipes out the entire just wipes generation. Out, like, 15% of the population and the young population. So like to the, all yeah. the old people just die. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So I want to, I want to, um, I want to finish up here. Two more things. One IOTSE, which is a union for crew yeah. has decided that they're, well, they're trying to unionize visual effects workers. 
Okay, the VFX people, people who make CGI stuff and all of these things. So they want to finally unionize um, these workers, which to me is, you know, it's funny because it's right in time for artificial intelligence to just take their jobs anyways. Because I don't know if you've seen what's happening with AI, but like it is, oh man, in five years, this stuff is just going to kill VFX jobs. Really, yeah. in a big way. It's really incredible what's happening there. I mean, you're 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 going to be able to generate stuff. I, I'm generating art right now. I'm working with a um, an artist, and it's kind of weird to say an AI artist, but there is a skill to putting in data and like reusing data and, and prompts to like kind of get what you want. It is a skill. I'm not going to say it's a crazy skill. I'm not going to say it's a skill that most of us want to acquire, but it's a skill. You know, the way that like playing Atari is a skill. Um, and anyways, um. Played a lot of video games in your life, Cameron? No, actually, I haven't. Uh, so anyways, I, I don't know. I ought to see unionizing VFX workers. I have we'll no opinion that on that, really. Man. Yeah. And then, and then the last thing I just wanted to talk about is, so it's going around that Christopher Nolan used an actual atomic bomb to recreate the atomic bomb explosion for his new movie about the invention of the atomic bomb, Oppenheimer. That's bullshit, obviously. It's bullshit. It's got to be bullshit. Of course, it's bullshit. You don't even have to think twice about that. But he, but they're saying they're saying that he didn't um, use CGI, that he actually exploded something massive for okay. the explosion shot. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, as long as it's not an atomic bomb and it's there's a big safe zone. And what does that matter? I mean, the lore is good. The, the lore I, is retarded. I can't say that. The, the yeah, lore is. Parted. Okay. Yeah. The is, idea that's that so Nolan stupid. would would drop a bomb when like Where, where'd you read this? Uh deadline. Deadline? I'm pretty sure it's deadline. I'm not gonna look it up right now. We'll deadline. we'll put it we'll put it in the description. I'll I'll yeah. pull the article, it'll be in the description. Yeah, yeah. deadline. Yeah. It's like fucking dead lane. It's like some dumb fucking spin-off. How I one, I'm sure that he really blew seriously. I'm I don't put it past him that he decided to probably do the biggest explosion in film history. That's great. Yeah. That's dope. That's is amazing. It, is it? I love that. I would love to know what what went behind that because I could tell you I've been on set and they have like these little mighty right and whoo the safety meetings, the hours it took setting up that little like one window pop in the garage was out of control. We had to stay blocks behind, getting yelled at by people if we walked too much in this angle. <laughs> oh, yeah, so much no, strict. Imagine what they had to go through. I mean, that explosion, if that was really what they did, probably was like a three-month plan. <laughs> like, just like they probably took a, like, just a whole month prepping that shit. Yeah. What would it be like, you know? I don't know. It's what do they set off? You know what I mean? Like, what was it? TNT, dynamite, uranium? Like, what no, did uranium? they set off? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting back into the nuclear side of things. What it's did like, they set off? Cameras, get it out of your head, bro. They didn't set off a real nuke. All right? I don't put, listen, if anyone you like tried it sneaking it back into the conversation there. TNT, right, this has been, is like, match. It's been a good sticks, conversation. Uranium. Oh, I wanted to give a shout out. Um, Quantum Leap got renewed for season two. And you remember you worked with Raymond Lee, who's the lead of Quantum Leap. He's in Flinch. He's in the diner scene with you. He's the, he's the cop. Oh, nice. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. Very cool. He's so got a good part on it. Give him a he's the lead. It's his show. His show. Look, when we played the cop on our, our scene. Oh, I did see. That's him. Because I It's did him see all over the place. His billboards everywhere. That's him. Wow, good for him. Yeah. Very good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Got a season. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. I still want to know how this explosion happened, if we could find out more about that. I'm thinking it's like they took like an oil tanker, like four of them. At one time, I, back after, right after 9-11, like two months later, here in Staten Island, all of a sudden, at like- <laughs> Here in Staten Island, my boys and I- we got, a, we got a bunch of fireworks from the firework place over in Jersey, and uh, we blew up a uh, blew a up a garbage can. 
No, we we uh all of a sudden all the houses started shaking and like I mean massive like a huge earthquake like explosion it was like boom That's and everything after nine like, eleven what That's scary after nine eleven Yo, it was like two months later. Like armors fell. I slept over my friend's house. His fucking armor fell down. Like it, it was crazy. Everyone ran into the streets. Like what the fuck? What the fuck? In the horizon, black smoke's billowing. Yeah, right immediately up. a bunch of goobas are going. Oh it's fuck! <laughs> they did. Yo, all of a sudden you hear they took the bridge. <laughs> they took the fucking bridge. It was. It was. But yeah, we all did. yeah, yeah, it just was, coming out, bro, dude. Everything. What ended up happening? It was right where the bridge was. What ended up happening was uh, an oil tanker, right over there. It's very industrial. Blew up, like those big cylinder oil things that hold oil. Blew the fuck up. Yeah. How it happened? This thing rocked the whole island, dude. Everyone's window. It's an island of trash. I mean, it's, everyone's window it's hard to rock. shattered. Yeah. They cleaned it up. Burned all the trash. Yeah. Yo, it was insane. So what I'm saying is. They could maybe take four or five of those things, pile them up on each other, and then just fucking let, let loose. You yeah, know? they could do that. That's how it happened, actually. I'm pretty sure that's – I'm going to go with that one. And, like, open – like, have to have, like, an open field. Like, how you got – you got to lock down what? Like, 20-mile radius? Like, they got to, like, buy out, like, 20 I'm, miles? I'm, I'm assuming it's a lot more than 20 miles. <laughs> We're going to find out. We're going to find out what Nolan blew up. We're gonna we're gonna see. Great PR though. Great PR. All they right. blew up the bridge. They took uh, the fucking bridge. This is Michael Dreyer. I'm Cameron Van Hoy. Thanks for stopping by. Peace out, everybody. Peace.